Welcome to part two of the Strong Museum of Play tour in Rochester, New York from the American Council of the Blind National Convention in 2019. I don't know if this is going to be split into a third part yet at the time of me filming this intro. We'll see, but you'll definitely find out. Anyway, enjoy the video. We're back in the atrium, standing in front of that beautiful stained glass window. On the left is Reading Adventureland for the kiddos. And on the right is I think where they were having story time and then there's the upper level where there are a bunch of photos and things on the wall. Passing by Spider-Man. Um, but we are currently in the American Comic Book Heroes exhibit. So this is an exhibit that examines superheroes and the role they have played on play. Um, so the exhibit starts with Superman and Wonder Woman right in the front, but we also have statues of Spider Man, of Iron Man, uh, of the Incredible Hulk, Batman is here, uh, Black Panther is here as well. And then Captain America is actually at the front of the museum. Because Captain America is Rochester's superhero. Oh, it's I don't man. know that. But um, Joe Simon, one of the co-creators of Captain America, yes. is from Rochester. So <laughs> I'm trying, the group is going a little slow. Ah, Batman is up on a pillar. He looks so ominous. Got all these comic book panels on the walls. Oh, there's a play area for kids. That's cool. This is so neat. And on your, uh, on your right is our Black Panther statue. Black Panther. <laughs> Black, like black yeah. I never saw it. I didn't see it either. I'm sorry. Be careful. There is a barrier on your left hand side. Now we're going to go into the butterfly garden. All right, we're in the butterfly garden. We just came out of the airlock. We're through an air curtain. There's a fountain. Tropical trees. Beautiful orchids. I think, I don't know what they are. Many tropical plants. There are butterflies here, roaming free. There are apparently button quail that are also gonna be roaming free on the ground. And there are some animals that are caged, such as birds. Whatever these yellow plants are that look almost like caterpillars or something, they smell really good. Butterfly fluttering. I went to a place in my parents' office. It was called Butterfly World. They knew I like butterflies. And one of them was like really These beautiful flowers. Whatever these little plants are, there's no signage for anything, but they feel like very wispy. They're pink. <laughs> they don't really have a scent to them though. This enclosure has a red hooded tortoise in it. It's hanging out. Okay, so we have a clamshell and coral. Oh! Yeah, so you'll feel the, the outside of the clamshell is quite rough, yes. jagged almost. Yeah, it is. Um, and then the inside is very smooth and it feels like pearl. It's a really pretty color. It's almost iridescent. Yeah, yeah, the inside is super, super pretty. And the coral is white. Um, What makes it white? So that is because that is the skeleton that is left. Okay. So when it was alive, it would have been colorful. It might have been green or yellow or pink, who knows. Uh -huh. Once coral dies, just like our skeleton, it ends up being white because it's mostly calcium. Right, okay, that makes sense. And then these are all the butterfly wings. Oh, those are all the butterfly wings. You'll see many different colors in here yellows and blues. I this one is a. I love the blue. It's yeah, so that is from a pretty. common morpho. There's some green ones hiding in there somewhere. They almost feel like feathers. 
They do. They feel like feathers. They're very velvety. Yes. They're actually covered in little microscopic scales. Their scientific name is Lepidoptera. It means scale wing in Latin. Wow. And when you touch them, you'll end up with little tiny scales all over your fingers. After you feel your fingers, you'll feel that dust. And that's that dust coming off onto your fingers. Mm -hmm. And then we have the shed. Yeah, that's the shed snake skin. skin yeah. Which almost And then feels I have like Wiffle netting. in my hand. If you're interested in touching Wiffle or ball python, let me know. I know snakes make some people nervous. <laughs> oh, wow. So let him see if you wrap around his tail around is it. He is, is this um, type of snake like venomous? No. That's what I thought. So this would not be a venomous snake. There are three ways a snake typically is, is going to be adapted to kill its prey. Uh -huh. One way is venom. Uh, one way is simply to overpower it, just swallow it whole. Uh -huh. And one is to be a constrictor. So this guy is a constrictor. Right. So he'll grab it with his mouth and then he wraps his body around it and squeezes uh -huh. really, really tightly. Now, to be honest, all snakes have some venom proteins in their saliva. Um, but most of them are not what we would consider to be venomous. It won't actually affect you. Okay. This is so weird. Just like feeling him move. So you can feel him like kind of grip you as he yeah. moves. And what he's doing, he's not constricting right. here. No. He's just gripping. Like he's holding on so I don't fall. He's like being weirdly gentle. He is really, really nice. I actually bring him to our preschool class all the time. They must love that. They love it. Because he's so gentle, he's so mellow, he's yeah. very, very good with people. This is so neat. People always think, oh, you're bringing out a snake for people to touch. And I'm like, he is the safest animal right. I have to bring out. People want to touch our toucan, and I'm like, he will bite you. So do they all have the same markings like that, or some of the... There's a lot of variation. So this is an animal that we've done a lot of uh, selective breeding with, just like dogs. We have all those different colors. We have many different colors of ball python. So this is what they would look like in the wild. They would be these shades of black and brown and yellow. But in captivity, we bred them to be uh, white and striped and polka dotted and orange and red um, and yellow. I've, I've seen just about any color you might want that a snake can possibly be. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, there are thousands of different color varieties of these animals. So. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can, you can look up a lot of information about them. They're, they're very genetically fun to play with. Just like dogs. Like, yeah. you know, you can do so many different oh, colors yeah. and shapes and sizes with yeah. dogs. So, these guys are very, very similar. And that's part of what's made them a popular pet. Mm -hmm. um, it's the fact that, as you can see, they're typically pretty gentle. Um, and then they come in so many different colors. And they're very low maintenance as well. We feed him once a week and just make sure he has water. And he'll go to the bathroom and shed maybe once a month. Yeah. That's, you know. That's, yeah, that's pretty well made. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that. that's not much above a potted plant, right. so. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So it looks like they have a bowl of orange peels or dried citrus or something. I don't know if it's for scent or for the butterflies or what. I'm not going to touch it, but it's just hanging out in all the greenery here. It's the Berenstein oh, Bears. It's so cool. This is like a whole tribute to them. Passing by pinball. It's a whole room with a bunch of pinball machines in it. Iron Man. It's okay. We're going back through the superhero exhibit. Got Spider-Man again coming up on the right. Wonder Woman is on the left. And Superman is on the right. Like I said, well, you guys can decide what we want to do next. And there's Wonder Woman behind. Now we're back in the atrium. So the train is leaving. So five adults at a time, one per car, and I will be getting on the next one. U.S. of Play. All aboard station. Rides are one dollar, but because we're here with the group and we have a little voucher thing, you do not have to pay. And it is one adult per car. However, the museum obviously does not really have restrictions for how many children, I believe, because children take up smaller space. Here it comes. Back in the station. It's cute. Oh, it's not stopping. It must be going around a few times. I'm not paying attention. Did you say that this train was run on a foot pedal? Yeah, so like there's literally somebody just like pedaling the that's the funniest no, he thing. Have to, like, he doesn't well, pedal it like a bike. Okay. <laughs>
Oh. All right, that makes a lot no, more like sense. It. Thank you. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, is, is this like the Flintstones? Like, yeah. <laughs> he comes to work to get exercise. Yeah. We are on a train, and we're about to start moving, and it's a little it's ridiculous. So but there's this entire giant play table. It's all like wooden model train set for kids to play with. It's cool. This is a display of all of the various Barbies. Well, not all, but most of the various Barbies throughout the time. A lot of them um, have darker skin. Some of them are wearing very bright fashion pieces. It's really cool. It is a long, slow march toward doll diversity. Barbie introduced in 1959 in an instant bestseller with baby boom girls initially only came in fair colored skin tones. As civil rights protests roiled the country, Critics chided Mattel for not representing the way more Americans looked, but it took until 1969 for Barbie to get an African-American friend talking Christy, and the first black doll to be named Barbie had to wait until 1979. That's interesting. Okay, apologies for the frame rate because of the lighting. America's favorite doll. When Barbie came on the scene, her buoyant mood matched America's. She had money to spend in that booming economic era, and consumers had money to buy her outfits. For her 1959 debut, number one Barbie wore this fetching black and white bathing suit and heavy eyeliner. Later versions toned down the makeup for a more teenage look. And here we have number one Barbie, 1959. Black hair, very pale skin, black and white bathing suit, lipstick. And you can see the eyeliner. We have, what is this one? I can't quite see. Oh, Build Lily Doll, 1957. This is what Chris was talking about earlier, how it was mainly marketed in adult stores in Germany or something. It looks very provocative. <laughs> And then the other 1959 Barbie, and my camera will focus, is more toward the front. She is blonde as opposed to the one with the dark hair, and she's posed slightly differently, wearing that same bathing suit. Oh, number three Barbie, 1960. This display is all about play therapy. It's different displays of dolls set up in various situations, like they're shopping, they all look like Barbies, or they're in a home setting. Actually, I think they're all malls, play therapy. Yeah, it looks like they're all in shops, almost like a mall. You got a hat store, shoe store, makeup, clothing, everything like that. It's really interesting. And then this talks about the lore of the small. It's about miniatures and how accurate they can be, like miniature little model items. There are so many Barbies. This case showcases some of them, not quite all of them. They're dressed for various eras. Also, down here it says return dress up clothes. Here I'm assuming the kids can play dress up. All right, we have more Barbies. Oh no, these are brats. Anybody remember the brats dolls and how much of a fad they were? So some of these are Barbies and some of them are brats. I think that there's also a Ken doll. I, they're all various different kinds of dolls, fashion doll. What is this? I can't quite see because of the glare. Just girls with a Z. They have all the brats. I think, oh, Cheetah Girls. Oh, from the Disney movie. This is amazing. Look at some of them. I love how um, 
they are starting to come out with more diverse dolls. Like one of them is in a wheelchair. Yeah. That's really? With different Barbies and all their packaging. It's really neat. They're all in various clothing items. Some of them are fancy, some of them are dressed like they're going on like horse riding or something. It's really neat. This is the Barbie dream house. We have the garage and the little pool. It's so funny how tiny the pool is compared to everything else. Yeah. It's like so small. Got the bottom floor of the dream house with the kitchen and living room dining room area kitchen and dining room little spiral staircase going upstairs we got some living room furniture and a bedroom set and then there's a little ladder going up to the third floor where there's an attic there are a couple of barbie dolls just laying there haphazardly this is the front of the dream house it's purple with pink and white accents and the little garage is the same color as the house it is pink and purple and we got the little tiny kidney bean shaped pool in between them. Maybe. Yeah, I watched the movies. I never read the Samantha books. So they have the Samantha American Girl doll with her first book, Meet Samantha. I believe she's from the Edwardian period. Everybody believes, I, I guess the consensus is that people think she's from the Victorian era, but oh. she's more Edwardian because she's in like the beginning of the 1900s. But I read the Kirsten, Felicity, and Kaya books. I never read Samantha, um, but I wanted to, and same with Molly. I never read her I read, books either. I read the, yeah, I read Kirsten. And the rest of this case, I think these are Cabbage Patch Kids, Barney and Elmo, Tickle Me Elmo, how everybody fought over that when oh it was gosh. like the big gift for yes. Christmas. Got more Barbies and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and up top there are superhero action figures. There's a teddy bear with a baby bottle. I don't know what quite that is supposed to be. Um, there's a little monster android looking thing. I think that's a Furby. It looks really creepy, like one of the newer ones. And some stuffed animals. So coming around on the left from the Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah, I will definitely show you where that is. There are more action figures and dolls. Horses, Barbies. There's so many toys here. It's crazy, like all behind displays. I think this is some of the comic book stuff. Um, possibly. Oh, Star Trek. Spark, uh, Spock and Kirk. Like, like right, uh, right there. You can see like they're in like a playset kind of sorta. Oh, and Star Wars. Got like a an AT AT or an AT AT. And I think that's a TIE fighter. Ah, and here we have America's dream boy, Ken. <laughs> in various outfits. One of them being a swimsuit, holding a towel. They have a giant living fish tank here with a giant fish. I can't remember what kind of fish this is, but they were explaining it on the way up. It has like a giant looking sword thing sticking out of the front of its fin. It's really cool. All right, everything for play. We had it into the gift shop. They have all sorts of things. I'm mainly seeing toys. So let's look around. So they have all these things here for Nintendo, like PlayStation shirt. Um, I believe this is a bag. Oh, it's a blanket that looks like a Mario level, or yes, um, a Mario level. Um, giant Yoshi and Mario dolls going around this thing. Uh, there are games. So not just all Nintendo, but like board games and toys and whatever. I thought for some reason that this whole thing was going to be Nintendo, but it looks like it's a conglomerate of things because there's some Star Wars stuff. And uh, yeah. So they have keychains. One side has a blue butterfly on it. The other side says the Strong National Museum of Play, Rochester, NYUSA, they're $3.99. They have, um, there is a coffee mug, but it doesn't look like it says anything about the Strong Museum. 
Uh, there's like some really long phrase on the front that I can't really see. And then on the back, it looks like a, oh, it says Rochester. Yeah, I think it's like a mug for Rochester in the museum or something. Um, I'm not quite sure what the price is. They have shot glasses that say the Strong Museum in, or it just says the Strong in black and red and the O on the Strong, I believe it's like a ball or something, I can't really tell. And they are $6.99, clear shot glass. They have scouting patches that just say the Strong Museum, but the O is like a flower, I think they're all the same. Scouting patches are $3.99, $3.50 or something. Yeah, $3.50. They have some t-shirts that say uh, with their um, Viewmaster thing logo on it. Oh, I dropped my keychain. <laughs> they also have a mug, like a travel mug with all little balls and icons and things down one side, like a joystick, um, game coins, things like that. The mug is white. It says, you know, the Strong National Museum of Play, Rochester, NYUSA, or something. Same as the keychain. The mug is white, like I said. The logo is in black and red. The mug is $12.99. The bottom also says the Strong National Museum of Play, but I think that's just the sticker. Yeah, it's just the sticker. Um, it opens, you know, like your standard travel cup to keep things hot. All right, so the adult shirts are $19.99. Youth is $17.99. They all come in the same styles. They have the Viewmaster AR thing. Blue butterflies on a gray background that say the Strong. Here they are displayed a little bit better down below. The butterfly one is gone because I took the display. The blue one, if I can see this properly, says let's play with a video game controller and a headset. And I believe it says the Strong National Museum of Play down below. It should, I'm pretty sure, I just can't see it. And then the Viewmaster thing, AR whatever. So we're watching the carousel go around right now. There are a bunch of horses in two you know, lines or whatever, they're going up and down. And then at the end, there's a spot for somebody who's in a wheelchair and unable to get on a horse. It's like a little chariot or a sleigh or something. Smile! <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, smile! Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're at Rock Burger, and here's the menu. It's literally so many different burgers. And then the other side is salads. Oh, they have pretzels. Oh, they have like the pub pretzel? like they stuff to like share. Yes. Um. Well, they have pub pretzels, which says it's served with house-made cheese or spicy mustard. Oh. And we have these pretzels. They look really good. They're like the giant pretzel. Um. Oh, nice. Oh, there are four of them. Oh, there are. Yeah. Okay. Let's so let's we can each then. have one. Yeah. Okay. And they have the cheese sauce. The cheese sauce is to your left. It's like in a thing. Yeah. Here you go. I hope you don't mind my, my reach. Oh, sure, no problem. I just was going to dip it in the cheese sauce um, too. I don't... Yo, of course not. I don't think we have napkins. I can't believe how big that burger is. What the heck? Huge. And it looks like it's on a brioche bun or something. Like it's not like a regular... Is there a thing in it? Like a yeah, toothpick there thing? A yeah. Little, like a sore thing. Oh, and you also have a pickle. Yeah. Like on the plate. Oh. And then your chicken tenders. Can we have our own plates, please? Yeah. Thank you. And then the turkey club and the wings. Okay, I realized I forgot to talk about dinner last night. It is now a new day. <laughs> Dinner was okay. Um, the thing is, is that these hotels are doing like limited menus for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because of the convention. So that was a little like, you know, different. So what I was showing you is probably gonna be different than what you're gonna be eating if you stay here because I'm here with a group. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go and I'll see you next time. Bye.